Hello! As of late, uh, many companies that were previously kind of overvalued have been really beaten down lately. And one of these examples, along with uh, many other tech companies especially, is Pinterest, a very, very well-known uh, social network tool or application, you could say, that uh, is being used by millions of people. And uh, it has its own stock and it's called uh, PINS, PINS is the ticker symbol. Now you'll see here that the company has lost about 73% in a year. That's absolutely insane. The company has been decimated really and the stock price uh, especially. Now, regardless of what the company is doing in terms of its stock price, we do know that this is a current downtrend right now and it's bringing pretty much every stock downwards more and more and more. But we want to examine the financials and see whether that actually makes sense or it does make sense to do the opposite, actually buy the company rather than sell it as many short sellers potentially do right now. First thing that we want to examine as usual is the outstanding shares and we're going to go through our usual path of examining the financials and at the end of the video we're going to do a discounted cash flow model and examine what kind of price we want to be paying for the company's stock today. Now before we continue please uh, I, I want to thank you for being here and if you if you want please leave a like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps along bring these videos to other people as well. You know the more likes you get the better it is. So thank you for doing that. And let's let's move on. So the outstanding shares of the company uh, are sitting at uh, 660 million over here as you can see and the company has been issuing more and more shares especially starting in 2020 as you can see when the stock price was going higher and higher and so you would expect the company to capitalize on that the problem is that this is a problem for investors because they're getting diluted and so they they issued about 100 million more shares here and that's substantial that's about 20 uh, about 20 to 10 percent uh, 15 percent something of that sort of uh, the outstanding shares total so Let's uh, take a look at um, the actual uh, statements now. The income statement is going to come first. And you will see here that the company is enjoying some nice year-over-year -year growth of uh, revenues, which is nice. You always want to see a company making more revenues over every year, really, and increasing those. And um, at the bottom line, you will see the net income here, which started in uh, the minus uh, and uh, actually more minus as the years uh, progressed. But then it actually reverted the situation and now it's sitting at 316 uh, million uh, in, net, in net income right now. And so the company is actually making money in 2021. Now the balance sheet of the company, uh, we will see here, uh, there are two very important things, the total liabilities and the, obviously the total equity. And the total liabilities of the company are sitting at uh, half a billion, that's not much. And uh, they are not taking on many liabilities, which is I like to see. Uh, check, take a look at what they were doing in 2017. This is 250 from 250 to 498. That's not an, an amazing increase, really. So I'm 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 fine with that. But uh, the even more important thing, the total equity is increasing as well, from one billion here to three billion. So they have tripled the total equity of the company. The cash flow, cash flow statement here. Uh, let's take a look at the operations cash, the operational cash. Uh, 1 million in 2019, from 1 million in 2019 to 752, 3 almost, million in the last 12 months, uh, fiscal year 2021 actually, which is awesome, I mean that's pretty great. And the cash from investing, the company is uh, not spending much right now, they did spend back in 2019 some in the market securities. What about, what about the, cash, the cash from financing here? Uh, they have repurchased some common stock as you will see here, which is interesting, but they have also issued more over here as well in the same year. And we did see that they, the company is actually issuing common stock, even though it's not recorded here in this um, cash flow statement. So the, ca the free cash flow, which is at the very end of the most important thing, the company was actually losing money from 2017 to 2019. But then in 2020 started making a little bit and 2021 was a great year. They actually made 100 million, 800 million. And so it looks like they, they are really increasing their operational cash really and the free cash flow, really, which is the most important thing. So that's very good to see. What about the multiples of the company? They are slightly elevated, but not uh, too elevated here. So I'm, I'm fine with that. It, it is a little bit elevated, uh, that, uh, more than I wanted to, to, get at, to get it at. And the return on equity is not great. It's 12%. The return on equity is basically how much um, the company is making out of uh, investments in equity and debt. It's a combination. 
uh, just because it uh, it tries to tell you how much um, how much money you are getting back on the company's uh, investing efforts really how well the company is investing their um, cash and that cash could be debt or could be equity so both things and there are there are like Nasdaq companies for instance that are getting 25% or 20% so this is a little bit low here they need to do a little bit better the solvency the company doesn't have a lot of debt as we saw already compared to equity and uh, we also did see that uh, in the income uh, sorry in the balance sheet over here they did have uh, like half a billion in total liabilities so half a billion here yet uh, they made 700 million in free cash flow which is more than half a billion obviously and so they can use this cash flow just to repay all the total liabilities so no issues there at all the next thing that we want to examine uh, so far so good we want to take a look at uh, how much the company is worth uh, today in terms of its stock price and the first thing we examine here is the outstanding share 658 million and you will see that I have already created a um, discounted cash flow model here and I have appended these values they have copy pasted those 658 as you can see here plus the free cash flow that we examined a little bit earlier over here you will see it in the free cash flow statement uh, the cash flow statement that the free cash flow is basically what I copy pasted uh, over here and it's the last five years of free cash flow and now we want to project into 10 years into the future and see how much money the company is going to be making and based on that we're going to project how much we want to pay today to get the company if we were to make some some specific amount of money into the future and you will see here that this gives us the five-year average uh, free cash flow which uh, is not precise because there have been uh, minuses as well so, this, so a lot of these values are not really precise so in this case there has been um, a steep increase in the um, free cash flow and so we cannot really use that as an um, informational metric sort of and so we're gonna go with a free cash flow growth of let's say 15 percent with a, which i think it's potentially fair for a company like uh, pinterest and uh, it you know it really depends on what they will be doing into the, in the future but i think 15 percent is probably okay and they may even achieve more but remember we're going for 10 years here so we want to be getting a 15 percent uh, free cash flow growth a year now last year they got 6,000 but that's probably not going to be happening every year as you can understand and uh, with the discount rate we are telling the model here how much we want to be making as a um, profit from our investor investment annually that is and so I'm going to go with 13 percent which I think is uh, is fair and the perpetual growth rate is uh, helps us calculate the terminal value I like to use something like one percent here which uh, is less than the economy and it still gives a little bit of growth to the company and now you will see that after these valuations over here uh, the price to per share to pay today for Pinterest would be 23.8 dollars in order to be making 15 13 percent uh, gains into the future for 10 for the next 10 years and so 23.8 is uh, what we want, were willing to pay and it's actually exactly where the company is really it's probably going a little, going to go a little bit less as you can see here 2350 is where it's uh, trading out after market so probably tomorrow is going to open at around this level and uh, potentially be a buy so what am i doing with pinterest you know i like it i mean it has fallen a lot and um, the free cash flow the only thing that i am a little bit unsure about is the free cash flow how the free cash flow is going to be growing in the next few years because I don't know that I don't have many years that the free cash flow was positive it was like these two years and this year seems to be an exceptional year for the comp company will they continue like this it may be worth examining what uh, the analysts are saying here and what they are projecting people who are actually following the company in um, you know and get more information about what their operations are doing but based on what I'm seeing here and the projections I have a little bit of risk understandably just because again i don't know what the company is going to be doing but uh, i like what i'm seeing here steep increase steep growth um and um i would be willing to get a little bit of uh, pinterest actually it looks like a fair a fair trade here and a fair investment and especially i mean if it goes down a little bit more that's uh, even more even better because you get a margin of safety so how much we'd want it to drop potentially let's say that we want for the risk that we are taking we want instead of instead of 13 percent to make 15 percent a year and in this case um we are willing to buy the company at 19 dollars 19.46 in order to be making that amount uh, every year it has to be that we buy it at a cheaper price right and so 19 so anything 19 to 20 dollars i think you actually get a reasonable margin of safety as well and so at that price 19 to 20 
I think it would be a very, very good uh, buy to tell you the truth uh, for keep, you know, for buying and holding. And uh, even now, even now, I mean, I could potentially see someone entering the company. I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a fair investment. As long as you can, as you understand that the free cash flow here is, we don't have like a lot of information from the past, yet the, the picture that's painted here is uh, nice because it's increasing every year, year over year. So that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, Pinterest. And uh, it's, a, it's a stock that actually um, a viewer of the channel asked me to take a look at and it was in my shortlist. I, did, I expected it to be worse to tell you the truth, but it looks like it went down so much that it's now almost a bargain really so nice to see and thanks a lot for the suggestion i love uh, hearing uh, your thoughts guys and your opinions and potential uh, asking potentially asking me for you know for more videos on specific uh, stocks please do so because i love doing that and uh, if you did enjoy this video you may want to all first first of all join our discord channel and come over and talk uh, with all of us about investing and uh, all sorts of uh, different things about the stock market and other, other types of investing and you can find the link in the description box below. And in the meantime, take a look at uh, this video that I made earlier. And it's about uh, Alibaba's issues and um, problems with the uh, US adding them to the notorious markets lists, at least some um, applications that Alibaba is uh, behind. So thanks for watching this and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.